I actually only took one trade this week, which was gold. And I actually did post it in the group chat. By chance, did you check? I'm sure you did. Did you check out that uh that chart that I sent? Yeah, I think. I think. Were you able to um break it down, or were you not able to? Um, not so. Okay. All right, cool. No problem. I'll break it down. And I'm assuming you're the one that said you wanted to go over a trading plan. Is that your? Did you write that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. That was me. Cool. Yeah, I figured it was you. I wasn't sure because it doesn't give the names on it, but I figured it was you because I know we talked about it a couple weeks ago. So we'll go over that too. But uh, let's see. So looking at gold on this day. So let's start off on the higher time frame. Um, I can see your screen. Though. Oh, you can't see it. Thank you for letting me know. I always forget that. Okay, great. You should see it now, right? Um, wait a minute. Yeah, no, I can't see it. You got it. Okay, cool. So I know on um gold, we've at least I've been bullish on the higher time frame. I would really like to see this low to high hold. I think this is a pullback to go on and make a new higher high sometime in the future. So overall, from the weekly time frame, I am bullish. But obviously, I don't trade the weekly. I break things down to a lower time frame and go from there. So here on the daily time frame, I have this high down to this low. Let me change this color. This high down to the slow. So I think potentially this is a retracement. So maybe go down lower. And if I zoom out a little bit, this is my weekly low to high. So at some point, I would like to see this be a higher low into a higher high. But as of right now, if my daily time frame is showing me bearish movement, I want to keep selling until the daily shows me bullish movement. And what I mean by that is let's say in the future, let's say next week or something. Remember, this is our weekly low to our weekly high. And then this is our daily high down to our daily low. I would like to see a break of structure that gives me an indication that price is now willing to go up to the upside. So, so far, this has not happened yet. So until that happens, I am still anticipating price to continue this bearish movement. How far it will go, I don't know. But so far, I'm anticipating this to be a bearish retracement before going bullish. So with that being said, that's my weekly and daily time frame analysis. But if I go to the four hour, my four hour structure is this high, this low. And actually, I can zoom in a little bit. I'm making it a bit nicer. This was my last structure high. And this was my last structure low. But as you can see, price got to underneath here. So this tells me that this is a new structure low right here. Well, where did this structure low come from? Well, it had to come from this structure high. So just plotting off basic structure. Once again, we have a high to a low. Price pulls back, makes a new lower low. That's my new structure range. So at this point, once price breaks above, this is a break of structure, a bullish break of structure. And although it looks very funky, I can zoom into the one hour. This might look a little bit cleaner. This was a high down to a low. Price broke structure. Price made a new higher low. And it makes a new higher high, new higher low, and then new higher high up here. So based off the four hour time frame, once again, I'll go to the four hour so you can see it. This is the four hour time frame. This is a high down to a low price break structure makes a new high, new higher low, new higher high, new higher low. So the four hour time frame is bullish. So on this day, when I came into the market, which is around here, I seen that this was the structure low all the way up to this structure high. 
I did not count this one candlestick pullback as a pullback. So my four hour is bullish. And this is basically my higher time frame analysis that I was doing coming into the market. And then going down to the one hour, looking at price. Did I delete everything? I think I did, which is fine. I'll, I'll redo it. Down to the one hour. I had this structure low up to this structure high price pulled back made a new higher low made a new higher high. This looked like a break of structure because price did get underneath. But then once price made this new lower low, it immediately make made a higher high. And I'll zoom in once again so you can see it a bit better. So even though this did look like a break of structure, Price immediately made a new higher high. So if price breaks structure, but then makes a new higher high, this is truly not a break of structure because if it was, if price is doing this and price broke structure, price would have made a lower high and a lower low. Price would not have made a higher high. So if price makes a higher high, this tells me that this was an inducement. This was a liquidity sweep. Whatever you want to call it, it was a fake out. If you want to read more about it, I definitely do have it here. Um, with structural inducement right here. But for now, keeping it very short, this looked like a break of structure, but then it ended up making a new higher high. This was a structural inducement. It was not a true break of structure. So at this point, my structure points are from this structure low. To this structure high. And again, when I come to the market, I don't see any of this just yet. It looks like this to me. So I'm thinking this is looking like a potential structure low, structure high, make a new structure higher low into a new structure higher high. Can you see that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes cool. sense. So I like this a lot, again, because my four hour is bullish and my one hour is bullish. So like I said, if I'm using time frame correlation, I want my higher time frame to align with my lower time frame. So my four hour time frame, like I brought to brought up to, is bullish. And now my one hour time frame is bullish. So I do want to take buys coming to the market. I don't want to take sales. The only issue that I see here is if I go to the four hour time frame. <clears throat> remember I told you this is my structure low. And this is my structure high up here. Yeah. If I draw my fib from swing low to swing high. And if I decide to go down to the one hour time frame and buy somewhere down here. Am I buying in premium or am I buying in discount? At premium. Exactly. What I do you think I should be buying in premium or should I be buying in discount? Uh, you should be buying discount. Beautiful. Exactly. So this isn't a bad trade because I am going with the trend as I showed you. My four hours bullish, my one hour is bullish. I want to look buys at the extreme order box. The only issue is, is that price is not in discount. So this doesn't mean I can't trade it. I just have to understand the probability of my trade working out or maybe the probability of my trade not working out. So this is still a good trade setup. But I just have to keep in mind that I am technically buying in premium, so I should be aware and be careful. So if I do buy, price could do this and then maybe come down here and then be going up. Or again, as you can see, sometimes price doesn't always pull back. Sometimes there's so much momentum, there's so much volume that price doesn't pull back as much as you think. And sometimes price will do this and then do that. Very similar to say right here. Let me do this. Replay. <clears throat> if I'm trading this day and I have my fib from this low to this high, obviously I would want to buy at discount and then go on up. So let's say on this day, I don't trade because I want to wait for price to come with a discount. But as you can see, price doesn't pull back. All price did was give you this very small pullback and then go on higher. So what I'm trying to tell you is. Don't be afraid to not buy or 
to trade at all. It could be a sell again. Um, don't be afraid to take a trade if price isn't in discounted premium. Just understand that where price is if it is in discounted premium. So in this case, I decided to take the trade, understanding that I was not in a discount. But just keep in mind that you are in premium. Does that make sense? I know I kind of rambled on, but hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, cool. So let's bring this back over here. Take that. <clears throat> Great. So me, I only trade London. And this will be a good example of why I only trade London as well. So coming into the market, I had to plot my two POIs as I always do. Always an extreme and always a continuation. At this point, when London opened down here, it was already in the extreme. And also on this time frame, I don't even have a continuation to plot. There's nothing here. So I didn't even draw one. I just have my extreme to work with right here. And I believe I drew it off the M3. Let's find out. Yeah, right here. This M3. This right here to me was a... A drop base rally. And I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see it. It was a drop, gave me a base, and they gave me a rally. So from here down, that'll be my order block. Can you see that? Yeah. Cool. There's my order block. There's my extreme. So it looks something like this on a higher time frame. So now coming into Frankfurt, let me go down to the one minute now to break down what's going on. So essentially what I'm trying to show you is a couple things. If I'm plotting my structure points on the one minute before um, London even comes in, I'm going to have this structure high down to this structure low. Price pulls back, makes a new structure low here. So this is my new structure high. At this point, price looks like it gives a break of structure. Pulls back. Makes a new higher high. Looks like it gives a break of structure. So this, doesn't this look like it could give us bullish structure and go on higher? Yeah, yeah. It's looking like that. So one, as you can see, London opens up here. So if I don't trade during this window, I wouldn't get confused for, for starters. Typically, I... Frankfurt can do whatever it wants, don't get me wrong, but typically London will make the move. Me being a London trader, I only trade London, so this is a good way of just avoiding any losses because Frankfurt will trick you like this. The other thing, if you aren't trading um, London and you're just reading price action, which is fine, you have to remember that price isn't always going to give us clean accumulation or clean distribution. And what I'm trying to say by this is at some point you have to take a step back and realize that price is in a range. Everybody is drawing a support line, trying to buy down here. They're drawing support, they're buying, they're drawing demand, whatever it is. And then people are drawing resistance up here. However it is. So price gets in a range. And then price has that manipulation phase. This spike down here is the manipulation. It is that sweep of liquidity. Because down here, this is where all of the stop losses are. So what happened was, if you thought this was a break of structure, which it does look like it, break of structure, you have to take a step back and realize that this isn't break of structure because you are in a range. When price is in a range, price isn't in bullish or bearish structure. Price is most likely giving you an accumulation or distribution. Again, you'll never know exactly which one it is, but based off the analysis, such as this low, whoops, such as having this low to high and price is now in this area, 
I wouldn't be looking to take a sell off of distribution to go on lower because obviously I believe price is going to go on up. So I'm only looking for accumulation here. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Makes Great. Sense. So being careful there, as in my window, I'm only trading London. And as you can see, London opens up, and that's when it gives the real move from here to here. And then so my structure, if I go back to my structure, or in this case, just pure accumulation, there's my range, here's my low, and then here's my high. So I'm working within this range. Can you see that? Yeah. Here is the buy side liquidity sweep, and here is the sell side liquidity sweep. And it's all within my POI. So beautiful. I'm looking to buy now. So price comes on up, makes a new high. And now I've got to figure out where my POIs are going to be. I'm always going to have an extreme, and I'm always going to have a continuation. So as of right now, my extreme, I think this is going to be one right here. Since I'm on the one minute, again, I wouldn't try to over refine, meaning I wouldn't try to make my order blocks as small as they can be because I'm already on the minute time frame. And based off what I see here, this is a sell to buy. This is a sell to buy. So this will be some form of a bullish engulfing order block. If I go to the two minute, let's see if we can find it. It's not the two minute, it's the three minute. It's the three minute. Oh. So right here, there's that bullish engulfing order block. For me, I don't need to go to the three minute to see it because on the one minute, I can tell that this is a sell to buy order block. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Great. Interesting. Same thing with the continuation. If I'm going to draw a continuation, I can search for the order block. Let's see if it's here somewhere. A uh, five minute could be here. It might be a four minute order block. We'll find out. Four minute bullish engulfing variation. Let's try this. Can I do? No, I can't do. Let me do some math real quick. I can't put the seconds. I thought I could. Okay, never mind. I thought I could put the seconds, but this will be the best order block right here. This is a simple bullish engulfing variation. Um, so this this is still valid. It's off of the four minute. I think we found it off the three minute too. No, five minute. Oh, this is not the form. This is five minutes. Sorry. Five minute bearish yeah. bullish engulfing variation order block. But if I go down here on the one minute, simply all I did was I marked up this sell to buy. This was a sell to buy as my order block. And I did like this a lot because this is right here a sweep of liquidity. And also off these lows, this is a sweep of liquidity. So whenever I draw my continuation blocks, I always want to see a sweep of sell side liquidity. And then if I draw a fib from this low to high, this is in discount. So beautiful. So those are my two POIs that I'm working with. At this point, one thing I want to point out is. Let me delete this, delete this. And then let's do replay. <clears throat> so right here on the one minute. Trying to clear some things up. Would you like to buy from here or would you not like to buy from here? What do you think? I know oh. you already seen the outcome, but Yeah. But yeah, uh, I would buy there. Okay, why would you buy there? Because it is in discount. Okay, great. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see how I can word this. Um, when you take 
Let me see. I'll do this first. Because this might make a little more sense. <clears throat> Would you buy this right now? Mm, no. Because it didn't mitigate it. It didn't mitigate it? Yeah. Well, if it touched the order block, isn't that considered a mitigation? Oh, yeah, the wicks. Yeah, the wicks. Gotcha, yes. I'll, I'll count a mitigation with the wicks. So in this case, if I'm telling you that it is getting mitigated, would you want to buy this? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, because it's in discount again? Yeah, it is in discount and it, it, uh, it uh, have mitigated. Great, no problem. Here. Prices right here. Would you want to buy this? Mm. This is structure. This is structure low, structure high, and you want to see price to this. Yeah, I think I would buy. Okay. I'll ask one more question right here. Would you? Oh so, yeah, the liquidity. Yeah, I see now where you where you what you want to say. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just had to word it differently. Again, I make this up on the spot, so that's why I don't had to think about how I'm gonna word it. So based off one or two, which one would you rather buy? Two. Two because of liquidity, right? Yeah. Great. So that's why here, yes, you are in discount, which is true. One thing I want to point out is that you are on discount, but this is a continuation order block. And you have to remember that your extreme order blocks will always have a better outcome or a higher probability than your continuations. So always keep that in mind. If you're going to buy between, if you're going to choose in between extreme or continuation, the extreme is always a better answer, no matter what. But right now, we're talking about the, the continuation, which is perfectly fine. Sometimes trades do work out that way. But here, when price comes on in, you could argue that this is a sweep of liquidity right here. Which is true. That is a form of liquidity. But at the same time, do you think that this liquidity is close or do you think it's far from the POI? I think it is far, though. Exactly. Even though it's the one minute, just look at the spacing between it and you can see that, hey, it's a little far. Maybe if this liquidity was maybe somewhere down here, like this, this might work as liquidity, right? Yeah. But it's not there. So it's up here. So keep that in mind. And now, if we consider it to be far, which I would as well, I really wouldn't want to buy here just yet because liquidity hasn't been swept. Correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. And now if I continue... <clears throat> now, has price been swept right here? Or liquidity being swept? Yes, uh, no, maybe. We, yes? Uh, I think uh, no, we can buy because it uh, li liquidity gets swept and uh, it mitigated. Great. I agree. So here... I don't think it's a bad idea to buy if you want to buy here. You place a buy. Says liquidity got swept. Put your stop loss in the order block and then obviously shoot for the new highs. But right now, what's when you take a trade, are you waiting for confirmations at all? Yeah. What is your confirmation? Uh, BOS. Okay. So here I would say this is your structure low to structure high, so you're already within your structure. Do you think maybe that you would wait for 
you can classify this as a BOS or maybe a change of character? Mm, no, no. You wouldn't wait for this? Um, I think I would. Okay. So if you do wait for this, you wouldn't buy here just yet. You have your POI, check. You have a sleep of liquidity, check. Now you're waiting for your confirmation. So if you take a buy here, you technically aren't waiting for your confirmation. So what you do is, in this case, you wait for your confirmation. And if I keep playing this out, did I ever get a confirmation? Uh, we, we only get the, the press me to get it on the extreme. Yes, so without looking at the extreme just yet, remember we're looking at oh, this yeah, to buy from. So I'm trying to show you here pretty much when price is here. If you are looking to buy at this continuation order block, that's fine. But what you should be waiting for is that change of character, pullback, and then you should buy here. Oh, yes. You shouldn't be buying down here, you should be buying here. Not at one, you should be buying at two. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand everything though. Know. Very similar here. You can buy here, that's fine. But I'll give you a third option. So now we know you don't want to buy one, you want to buy two. And this should be a three. Let's pretend that's a three. <clears throat> so based off of two and three, would you rather buy it two or would you rather buy, rather buy it three? I, I'd rather buy it three. Why three? Uh, the confirmation and the, the liquidity. It exactly. have um, one more confirmation. Exactly. So the third gives that extra confirmation. So here, I'm not saying that you would be wrong to buy. If I can find it. Here. But if you're waiting for a confirmation, you never got it. Price never goes above and gives you that change of character. Price actually goes lower. So this is how I would have avoided this entry or this loss, I should say. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Great. So we never get that change of character. No problem. Now we're in the extreme. This is a high probability setup. This is what we want. So now if I am going to take a trade, same thing. Do I want to buy here? Or do I want to wait for a confirmation? Um, I think we should wait for a confirmation too. I agree. I will say this though. If you are going to take a no confirmation entry, I would highly recommend to only do it the extremes. Once again, when you're doing no confirmation, you are kind of being a bit riskier. So if you are going to be riskier, I wouldn't do a risky trade on a risky POI, which is that continuation. I would do a riskier trade on a higher probability POI, which is that extreme. So here, if for some reason you do take a buy here, I don't think that's terrible at the order block. That's fine. But just be aware that you probably should wait for a confirmation. So now I'm going to speed this up a little bit. <clears throat> So I went a little too far. Okay, so here, what is that confirmation that we were looking for? A change of character. Great. Remember, we were looking for this high to be broken? Mm, yeah. That never yeah. broke? Yeah. 
now since price made a new low high to low high to low wouldn't this be our new change of character that we're looking for and we can delete this poi because yeah. we're no longer looking at it yeah is that a change of character yes yes it is great so at this point will we be looking to buy when price pulls back yes Can you see how this is an extreme order block with the liquidity sweep going into it? Yep. So don't you think you'd want to buy somewhere down here in this order block? So this time it is a continuation trade. Is this a continuation trade? Uh, because uh, you you drew a new word block. Yes, this one. So let me, I'll break it down even a little bit more. So this is our structure. Structure low, structure high. We're looking to buy here, right? Yeah. Now price does this. Isn't this an internal low to an internal high? Yep. Great. And then price pulls back. And then based off this internal low and high, isn't this an order block as well? Um, yeah. Yep. And then isn't this the sweep of liquidity going into the order block? Yep. And then price should probably do this now. Mm, yeah. And then higher time frame structure. This is our structure higher low. To our structure higher high so we were using our internal structure to give us a confirmation entry for our higher time frame structure oh yeah i see so going back down here i'm using my internal structure relative to my higher time frame structure mm, yeah see that yeah yeah makes sense so this is where my other order block comes into play. So here I get that chain of character as I told you. And then let's see. And the price goes on up from here. So this isn't where I enter just yet, but this is where you can enter. But this is how I actually missed this first entry, which is fine. But um let me clear up some stuff. Let me remember what I did. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. So you see how the black is my structure? This is my structure low to high. Yeah. And then my white is my internal structure. So I'm trying to zoom in. I know it's kind of crammed up. But this is my high down to my low. My high down to my low. And I get a change of character right here, right? Yeah. And then price pulls back. Makes a higher low. And price goes on up. Makes a higher high. So based on here, wouldn't I expect price to make a new higher low and a new higher high? And then maybe another new higher low and a higher high? Mm, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because once again, this is my structure from this low to high. So I'm thinking price is going to pull back. My bad. Make a new high, pull back, make a new high. I'm just waiting on my internal structure to show me that price is ready to do that. So based off here, off my internal structure.
I'm currently working within this low to high. So once again, I want to draw two POIs. One have an extreme and a continuation. At this point in time, I forget which. I didn't even draw the order block here. I think essentially all I drew was this order block here. This was my bullish engulfing order block. Yes, it does get mitigated here, but once again, it, is, it can get mitigated as many times as it wants. I just always have to draw an extreme order block no matter what. So this is the lowest order block from this low up to this high. Can you see that? Yeah. Great. So now price in here. Don't you think I want to buy down here? Down in the extreme? Mm. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. Exactly. So that's what I'm thinking too. So now I think here, I could just buy here if I wanted to. So based off of this candlestick, this bullish candlestick, or maybe even this bullish candlestick, you could just buy with your stop loss underneath here and shoot for new highs. That's perfectly fine. That's doable. But me personally, I went down to the 15 second to see what was going on. And again, it gets fractals within fractals, and I'm going to try to draw it out one more time. So price does this. I know I didn't draw liquidity, but what, just pretend price took out liquidity here. Would you, you wouldn't want to buy here, right? Yeah. Great. So then on a lower time frame, what you want to see here is this, right? And you see want to buy here, liquidity. right? Exactly. I know I didn't draw liquidity here, but ultimately you want to see that change of character, that break of structure here, right? Yeah. Great. If you wanted to zoom in one more time, what would you want to see right here? Um, if I were to zoom in one more time, uh, confirmation. Exactly. And how would that confirmation look? Uh, break of structure. Great. It would look something like this. Right? Yeah. Okay. So you can keep zooming in, keep zooming in as much as you want. So that's what I'm doing here. If I go back up to the one minute. From this low up to this high. Try to draw different colors because I know I have a lot of colors going on. So I got this low to this high. I zoom in here to find that change of character. Technically, I don't have to zoom in because it's on the one minute, but I find that change of character. So now I have this low to this high. What I do here is I zoom in. And what I want to see is another break of structure, change of character to go on higher. Can you follow along? I know I'm kind of drawn over the place. But does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah, it does. So, so even though I'm on the one minute, I can zoom in again as many times as I would like. If I go down to the 15 second, I am zooming in to find that change of character, break of structure, whatever you want to call it. So if I clear this up, can you see how this right here is that change of character? I'm going to delete this. Can you see that? Yep. So based off this screenshot I took, it's on the 15 second. This is what I'm taking a trade off of. I am looking at this change of character. I'm seeing price pull back. I'm seeing price come into this order block. This is a sell to buy. Right? I'm seeing price yeah. sweep liquidity coming into my order block. And then here, I'm taking a buy. And even again, if you want to break it down even more, isn't this a low to a high? Uh -huh. And then isn't this high to a low? And this is a change of character. Oh, uh, yeah. Looks like this, change of character. 
So I literally showed you like five different chain of characters within chain of characters. And so hopefully it makes sense because I know it's kind of confusing because I started all the way up on the one minute, talked about this chain of character, and then went down to the 15 second, talked about this chain of character. And then even within this chain of character, there's a chain of character. So I have all this bullish confirmation that price wants to go up. And this is why this buy comes into play. I have my stop loss underneath. I technically could, if I wanted to be really greedy, place a buy here, put my stop loss here. Because <laughs> my, my stop loss was lower. <clears throat> I could have placed it higher. But again, at this point, this is gold. I'm risking, I think this is, is that really 10 pips? I think it's like 10 pips, yeah. This is just me being greedy off the 15 second. So I just made it a little bit bigger. There's no reason for me to be this crazy. Technically, it works out. <clears throat> and it goes in my favor. So if I really wanted to, I could have placed a buy here. But that's not what I did. Stop loss down here. I used this entire order block. And again, zooming out to my one minute. Remember how I told you this was my structure low to my structure high up here? If this is my structure low to high, I would at least want to see price come up here and make new highs. And that's when price yeah. made new highs. Again, do I know how far price is going to go on up? I don't know. Do I know if price is going to come into discount like I showed you over here? I don't know. And as you can see, it did not. My anticipation was price was going to come into the order block and then make new highs up here, but it did not do that. So even though my analysis, the overall analysis was wrong, I also told you that price is technically in premium, meaning from this low to the high, I am buying in premium, so most likely that trade wouldn't even work out. Now price is in discount. Maybe price is ready to make new highs now. That's definitely possible. But in the moment, I did not know if price will make it all the way back down. I didn't care to wait for it. I seen the opportunity. I have chain of characters within chain of characters within chain of characters that help me give or that help me um give me confidence in that bullish analysis. And then to me at this point. This was a one to eight trade. So I really didn't need more. If I wanted to, this trade potentially ran for one to 22. And again, if I was being super, super greedy, which there really wasn't a need to, this stop loss could have been underneath this low. And this potentially showed you a one to 50 trade. Now I'm not here saying I take one to 50 trades, but I'm telling you that it is possible to take a one to 50 based off everything that I showed you which is nothing but logic and rule-based. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Wonderful.